In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not serve my God or worship the golden statue that I set up? Be ready now to fall down and worship the statue I have made. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, flute, lyre, harp, psaltery, bagpipe, and all the other musical instruments. Otherwise, you shall be instantly cast into the white hot furnace. And who is the God who can deliver you out of my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar, There is no need for us to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, can save us from the white hot furnace, from your hands, O King, may he save us. But even if he will not, know, O King, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden statue that you set up. King Nebuchadnezzar's face became livid with utter rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times more than usual and had some of the strongest men in his army bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the white hot furnace. Nebuchadnezzar rose in haste and asked his nobles, did, not we, did we not cast three men bound into the fire? Assuredly, O king, they answered. But he replied, I see four men unfettered and unheard, walking in the fire, and the fourth looks like a son of God. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver the servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the royal command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Blessed are you, the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherub, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, 
praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory and praise forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciple, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. A slave does not remain in a household forever, but a son always remains. So if the son frees you, then you will be truly free. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me, because my word has no room among you. I tell you what I have seen in the Father's presence. Then do what you have heard from my father. They answered and said to him, Our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. But now you are trying to kill me. A man, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You are doing the works of your father. So they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and am here. I did not come of my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. In continuation for the theme for the last several days, uh, and the effect of sin within our lives, both darkening our uh, intellect and also uh, causing us to really fall out of relationship with God. We see today that effect taking place uh, even with the Jews who believe in Jesus. Uh, we see this in really the foolishness of the statement, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been enslaved to, ever, to anyone. Whereas every Jew, especially as they recite the Holy Torah, knows that they were enslaved for several centuries to the kingdom of Egypt, and that it was by the power of God, and not by the power of man, that they were delivered from this secular slavery. But more importantly than being delivered from a secular slavery is the deliverance from the worst slavery, which is slavery to sin. And our Lord says, Anyone who commits sin is a slave to sin, and that a slave does not remain in a household forever, but a son always remains. So if you and I today are truly going to be called the children of the Most High God, not by birth but by adoption through holy baptism, you and I must avoid the slavery to sin to which we promised, or our parents on our behalf promised, at our holy baptism, and which we ourselves reaffirm freely when we receive the holy sacrament of confirmation. Because at the end of the day, all sin is a turning away from God. And if God is life and truth and love himself, all sin either weakens or destroys our relationship with life, with truth, with love himself. And so if we wish to truly have life within us, God's grace, 
participation in his very being itself, if we wish to truly abide in the truth, and if we wish to truly be loving persons, the only way in which this is possible for everyone is to be a true disciple of Christ. And one of the challenges we face in today's world is really the temptation to a form of moral relativism by which, whether it's people within the church or without the church, try to just say, ah, oh, you know, sin. You know, that's just something that the church created in order to make people feel guilty and in order to control and to manipulate people. But we know by the simple world around us that sin truly does separate us from the God who is life itself, that sin sows the seed of destruction and death within our very being. It's no surprise that in a society that is more accurately called, or they're trying to call, post-Christian, that the rate of divorce, the rate of violence within households, the rate of suicide amongst young people and now the elderly, is only increasing. Why? Because to be separated from God is to be separated from truth the knowledge of who we are and why we exist. It is to be separated from love for which we are created to be vessels of, to know God's love and to love Him in return, and by which we actually fulfill the reason of our existence. And then lastly, from life Himself, because to separate ourselves from God is to separate ourselves from the very source and cause of our existence. And so when we find ourselves in a relationship or within a community, it could even be a parish community. As a priest and as a seminarian, I've seen this firsthand. And we see either the clergy or the religious or even groups of lay people promoting a secular ideology which is contrary to the will of God and therefore the dignity of the human person. You and I have the moral obligation to do something, to warn them of the danger in which they are entering into and encouraging other people to enter into. And unless we can do this in a spirit of charity, meaning true love, abiding in truth, then you and I cannot be said to be the disciples of Christ. And if we wish to see our friends and our family members and ourselves truly flourish, to exist in the freedom that only the children of God possess, that only the faithful disciples of Christ possess, then you and I must boldly go out and proclaim the gospel. And when we do this, we have to be prepared, as St. Paul taught Timothy, to give an account for our faith. We have to be able to explain to people why God has revealed to his church his moral teaching and his theological teaching. We have to be able to explain to people why something is good for us and why something is wrong for us. And we can't just say, well, because the Bible says so, or because the church says so, or because I said so. Because as rational creatures, the thing that is going to be most appealing to us is a rational explanation of the truth. Because when we come to understand the mysteries of God more clearly, that understanding helps us to enter into a deeper love for God and His work taking place within us. Because at the end of the day, there's an old theological maxim that says, you cannot love what you first do not know. And that's really simple. You cannot love that which you first do not know. And so we want to help people to come to love God, not only by the example of our life, but by the ability to provide basic instruction within the faith, do we help people to enter into this call to discipleship, the person of Jesus Christ, true God, true man. And the place where this is supposed to take place most perfectly is not simply here in the church, in the pulpit, but every husband and wife, every mother and father, is supposed to do this for their spouses and for their children. 
And it's only when we take this vocation of all being called to be catechists within our daily lives that we will begin to transform the world around us, that we will begin to help people to live a life of joyful boldness to the glory of God, rather than to live a life of fear and coercion that causes us to fall into sin and to worship empty and worthless items. And so as we go through this day, and as we're approaching the great week of our Church of the Year, Holy Week, let us ask ourselves, how are we doing in fulfilling this vocation of being catechists, of being the Lord's disciples with our family members, with our friends, with our co-workers? And if the answer is we're not doing very well at this, well, then the next question we have to ask ourselves, what are we going to do about it? There are great resources uh, that are available here to the parishioners of St. John the Evangelist for ongoing faith formation. And if you haven't taken advantage of our parishes uh, access, which we provide to all our parishioners free of charge, to things like form.org, I uh, strongly encourage you to go online and start taking the instruction uh, within the faith personally. Don't wait for somebody else to provide it for you, but with a hunger within you to know and love God more, seek after the truth that our Lord Jesus Christ has given us. So that way, in coming to know God, we might love Him more, and that in coming to know His teachings and in following them, we all might be free from the slavery of sin. May God bless us this day and always. Let us lift our hearts and minds to God as we present our petitions to Him. That the Church may continue to be purified and sanctified through the grace and mercy of God, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That national and international leaders may be empowered by the Holy Spirit in serving their people as Christ came to serve, most importantly through their own conversion and a life of discipleship faithfully uh, in relationship with Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have turned from God through sin may receive from Him the grace of conversion and repentance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this Lenten season may be a time of growing in the gifts God has given us through the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, that all who have died may be united with Christ in heaven. We pray especially this day for Laura Burns, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of all those who are sick, ill, and dying, and for the repose of the soul of all those who have died during this time of crisis, especially those who could not gain access to the sacraments of healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. 
For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual grace. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Receive back, the Lord, these sacrificial offerings which you have given to be offered to the honor of your name, and grant that they may become remedies for our healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Sent by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed in the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Mitchell, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be pro heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by the one teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace, the Lord, be with you all. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
God has brought us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, the Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our heart and strengthen us with eternal protection. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May we God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. St. John the Evangelist.